Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on volume and surface area of composite figures. What you'll learn, well, two headings that would make an outline of this lesson could be volume of a composite figure, and surface area of a composite figure. Now for our real world link, Kaylee and Miles are making a bat house for their backyard like the one shown. They need to determine the surface area to find out how much wood they will need. What three-dimensional figures make up the bat house? Well, here I see a rectangular prism and a triangular prism. So that's what we can write. What method could you use to find the surface area of the bat house? Well, we could find the area of each face and then add those. Then we could subtract the faces that overlap and then we would have the surface area of the bat house. Suppose you wanted to find the volume of the bat house. What method could you use? For this, I would find the volume of each shape separately, then add. One of our two headings was volume of a composite figure, and that's what we're going to do now. The volume of a composite figure can be found by separating the figure into solids whose volumes you know how to find. So find the volume of this composite figure. Well, that's not exactly easy to do because we don't have a formula for a figure that looks like a tilted L or a Tetris piece here. But what we can do is break it into two rectangular prisms. And so we have this rectangular prism that has the length of 16 here, width of 8, and then going back 6. And so that's like we cut off right here and here. And so this prism here is this prism there. And then we're left with prism B back here. And then we would add them up. So Volume is length times width times height here. Volume of figure A was 768. The volume of figure B was 384. And you add those up and you find the total volume. What about guided example two? Find the volume of this composite figure. Well, it looks to me like we have a pyramid with a square base, so a square pyramid. And then we have a rectangular pyramid that all the same dimension so that's a cube so we have a square pyramid and we have a cube and you can see we found the volume of the cube length times width times height we find the volume of the square pyramid by using one-third area of the base times the height add them together to get 618 and 7 tenths cubic feet so this lesson really does tie together everything that we've been doing in this chapter now what about our question. 
find the volume of the composite figure. Well, we need to break this into areas that we can, or volumes that we can find. And so what I would do here, there's a lot of different ways. But what I'm going to do is draw a line here and draw a line back. And I'm going to label this A. And I'm do, going to do the same thing here. I'm going to call this shape B. And then this side C. Because now if I cut these off here, these two shapes are the same. And then I have my prism up here. And there's a lot of different ways to solve this, but that's how I'll draw this one. And so for shape A, and really for shape B, if we redraw this a little bit to help us see our dimensions. We have this flat front. We're going back a little bit. We'll just kind of draw this coming back up. And I'm not the best artist in the world, but hopefully we can see then that this side would be 7, this would be 1, and going back would be 6. And volume for this shape is going to equal length times width times height. Volume is going to equal 7 times 1 times 6. So volume equals 42. Now there's two of these shapes, so I'll multiply by 2 to get 80. Now what about the top? It almost looks like a little table here. If we look at the top of the table now, we would have a shape that looks a little bit like this. We draw this rectangle here, and then it's kind of going back in this direction. And so, eh, something look, looks a little bit like that. This back edge is 12. Now, this front edge is 12. And going back is still 6. Now what we need to find, though, is this height, this distance here. Well, the whole distance going all the way up was 9. The smaller distance was 7. So the piece that's left here is 2. Well, that piece there is 2. And for this shape, volume is going to equal length times width times height. And so volume is going to equal 12 times 2 times 6, multiply those together, we get 144. Then, to find the volume of everything, add your 84 with your 144, and your result is 228. So 228 centimeters cubed is your solution. In the second part of our lesson, we can also find the surface area of a composite figure by finding the areas of the faces that make up the composite figure. And in our guided examples, you can look back at the previous pages and see examples one and two and see how they take apart the faces and find the individual areas in order to find the surface area. And the same thing with guided example four. The same thing as uh, the guided example 2, where you could see the square here as being part of the cube. Now, the reason here, though, to note that there's only five of these. They took five of these because if you think of the cube, that top side of the cube isn't actually a part of the surface area. So you have to take that into consideration when finding the total surface area. And then you have your triangles for your uh, pyramid portion. And there were four of these for the four faces. And again, you didn't find the bottom of that because just like the top of the cube, the bottom of the pyramid is not a part of our surface area for that question. So now as we look into our example here, our got it. I'm going to drag the page a good ways of the way up. Now you have the right side of your page and even all the way up to take these notes down. Um, but I'm just going to use the bottom here of my slide uh, in order to better illustrate what's going on here. Now, for the surface area, we need to find all the outside faces. 
And so I'm going to draw the biggest one first. I'm going to draw this one here. And that matches this here. So you can kind of see how this is the same shape. Now, this side would be 2. This side would be 3. And we do need to draw a dotted line here because we have two different rectangles here. This top portion here matches this top portion here. Well, this here is this two feet here, so this distance here is also two feet. And if our total distance here is three feet, and this piece of it is two, that leaves us just three minus two, or one foot, for that part. Now, the total height was two. And this piece here says one, so we're going to label that one one. And so now I have the pieces that I need here in order to find the shape. This part here is a rectangle, so we can take area equals length times width. So area equals two times two, or just four. For this piece here, it's also, well, this case, rectangle or square as well. One times one, which is one. And so our area of this piece is four plus one, which is five. Now before we move on, consider how many of these do I have in this figure? Well, I have the one in the front, plus there is one back here that matches it. So I can take this five, multiply it by two, and have a result of 10 feet squared for those two sides. Now, that's two of the faces. What about the rest? Well, we have this top piece here, and we'll start with that. This top piece right here matches this here in my drawing, and this is two. And for this side, this matches this side, and we can actually use this number here, this two feet, for that side. So this is going to be two as well. Area equals length times width again. Area equals two times two, so area is going to equal four. So this is checked off and this is checked off as is the back side. What about this side here? Well, it's also a rectangle. We've established that this bottom piece here is two. And now what about this side going up? Well, our whole length is two. This piece is one, so right there we're left with one. Area, once again, is length times width. Area equals two times one, so the area of that piece is two. And now that one's done. Now as we work our way down the steps, we're now down to this rectangle. And we've established that this bottom side here is two. And that this distance here, well, the whole thing was three again. This is two, so this piece is going to be just one. And if area equals length times width, area is going to equal two times one once again, and area equals two. And now we're down to this bottom face, and hey, these are actually labeled as two and one. So area is going to equal length times width, area equals two times one, area equals two. And so now we've covered all the visual sides, the ones that we could see. We've covered this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and actually also the one in the back there that matches this one. Now you have to ask yourself, are there any other sides that I need to cover? And the answer to this question is yes. I have the bottom that I need to cover, and I have this back side over here, or the side side that I need to cover. And so we have two more rectangles that we do need to draw. And if we think about this bottom side, we'll have this side matching this side here. Well, this side is three. And then going back this way matches this side. So the bottom rectangle here, that side's going to be two. 
can have area equals length times width again, area equals 3 times 2, and area equals 6. So now we have the bottom covered, which is a good thing. Then we have the back side, so one more rectangle. This piece is 2, and we'll have this matching here, so that's going to be 2. And then our distance going back here will match this here, so again, here's our matching. And that is also 2, as this was both 2. And so one last time, area equals length times width, area equals 2 times 2, and so area equals 4. Now I have all of these different surfaces. And we did follow this advice in this note to make it easier to see each face, sketch the faces, and label the dimensions of each, and we did that. And now all we need to do is add up all of our numbers. So we have 10 plus 4 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 6 plus 4. And this does add up to 30 feet squared. That is it for this lesson on volume and surface area of composite figures. Good luck!